so so this stream was all about the archetypes, uh, which they um, kind of hinted at at um, Summer Game Fest. And like at Summer Game Fest, they had like all the arch- well, not all of them, but most of the um, archetypes we haven't seen uh, playing behind them. And they're like, that's what we're going to show off in our uh, showcase. So that's what they did. Of course, the man himself, Sir Hashino, pretty much the only one here. Um, Sojima wasn't here, even though Sojima was at Summer Game Fest. He wasn't in this stream. Uh, this was pre-recorded, obviously. Um, so they kind of went over the the battle system, which we which we've seen in play uh, in the past. You know, uh, the squad squad feature, the metaphor incorporates tactical planning into its established systems. Along with you know, the overworld feature, pretty much, where if you if you, um, you know, hit enemies that are lower level than you, you pretty much automatically kill them. Uh, or if you hit something ho- like higher level, you can hit it to kind of stun it and go into an advantage in battle. So, yeah, now they um, they finally showed us the place where uh, we, we go to kind of, I guess, get access to our archetypes and, you know... Um, you know, kind of augment them and whatnot. Uh, Academia is what they call it. And in this place, uh, one thing, one thing, one big parallel I've, I've seen in pretty much every trailer, when, when we see Academia, you see this huge statue of, of here that's kind of similar to uh, the Vitruvian Man. Um and that's the that is uh as present in your uh archetype menu which we'll see in a, in a minute or so the individual in academia has high hopes for the protagonist awakened archetypes i've been waiting he is well versed in archetype and knowledge there we go. And will so it's like you know the vitruvian man sort of kind of and all your your archetypes are around again they uh they're saying 40 40 plus archetypes not including um those including the the main archetypes will which will branch off into you know subsets of that archetype and his support to the protagonist's journey Help. so here I'm just reading a little bit the seeker on versatile skills including wind magic single tar- target healing and attack buffs so guessing weak to weak to lightning if lightning magic is even present which I'm pretty sure it is. Helping him to awaken archetypes. The healer, excellent and magic, magical support. It can restore health, cure status ailments, and cast light magic. So weak to kind of mudo, um, if you would, or dark or curse magic. Archetypes are managed. Uh, the knight. And this again, reading them out because this is the first time we're seeing them. This protector can increase its own defense or draw enemy attacks. Useful for redirecting otherwise otherwise deadly blows so knight are probably more of an individual defense uh there's probably a subset either a subset or better archetype that's more more aligned with team defense so uh there it probably evolves into something that will allow you to defend the put defense on the entire team so when you think of skills you think of your regular skills, and then your ma skills, which ma, the prefix ma affects everything. So a mahama would be light on all the enemies. A ma, I'm trying to think what, um, ma, not makara karn. Um, oh damn, I can't think of the uh, defensive. Um, Maraku Kaja, it, there it is. It, it it had to come to me. So Maraku Kaja would be your defensive on everybody. But Taru Kaja would be your, you know, attack buff on everybody. So I'm guessing there is like an evolution in the skill that would just in the um archetype itself that would focus on on um team defense rather than just uh individual defense like the knight. 
engaged in lineages such as this one. The warrior, skilled in physical slash, attacks with a sword and cuts down foes with strong single target damage. See, it, it, it's, it's focusing on single target things. So, yeah, when you, when you kind of evolve it, it will focus on AoE. Branching out as they are acquired during the journey. This the mage, using fire, ice, and electric, so it's present, uh, excels at hitting enemies' weak points. So your mage, like whenever I whenever I play Megaton games, I I like to like Megaton Persona, what have you, uh, and this is vastly different, um, because like Persona, I'll, I'll use reload as an example i like to make elemental overlords because it's one thing to have a it's one thing to have a demon or a persona that covers one one um element no i like to have them cover as many elements as possible if they if one thing slips that's fine somebody else can cover it but usually i like to have an elemental overlord and that's uh i think mate like like mage says it covers pretty much everything except for light and dark maybe so there's probably a it's probably it probably evolves into something that will cover everything. This is a game screen from the early stages of the story. So right now we only have access to the initial archetypes with basic skills. But once you're able to swap archetypes, the real game strategy begins. Details on how the protagonist comes to visit this place and you can pet the cat detail in subsequent updates. So please look in game. to it. Can pet the cat. Now I'd like to introduce his name is Plateau the types and characteristics of archetypes as well as details about the related battle systems a good boy. including some that have not yet been revealed in the last live stream we introduced the different types of archetypes including some of the foundational ones the versatile seeker who is a well-rounded archetype I'm gonna go back to the, uh, the skills some of the foundational ones the verse God damn it Different types of archetypes, including some of the foundational ones. So sick and day. Sick being, you know, the prefix for cyclone, I guess. So wind. The versatile seeker, wind. who is a well-rounded archetype. The mage. Is it bolt? Who can exploit the Fire. enemy? Or bot. Oh, okay, bot. These weak points with powerful magic. The thief, skilled in abilities like robbery. The, the brawler. Diligent discipline, strike dodge. Perfect punch. Skullcracker deals uh, physical strike damage to one enemy. So there, there's different damage type, um, physical damage types, of course. Uh, may inflict forget. Yeah, I'm curious as to what all the ailments in what all the ailments will be uh, in, in the game. So forget is one. Um, I keep going. The brawler who excels in physical attacks using their fists. In terms of other initial archetypes. Heat up. So probably like a heat riser. Types. We have the warrior who excels in sword attacks. The knight with outstanding defensive skills. The healer who specializes in recovery. The commander. Okay, this is something I really wanted to talk about. Um, because uh, when you think of classic Mega Ten, when you think of like right now, I'm playing SMT2. Um, shit, and God. <laughs> now, now I think about it, I won't be able to get back to SMT2 until after I finish Vengeance. Another thing. Uh, but. When you think of classic Mega Ten, you you have you know the whole grid system and everything, and you have six squares usually. Uh, two can be occupied by you know player characters, and all the others uh, are pretty much occupied by demons, right? So this kind of like this is the first time we're seeing we're seeing formation from from quote unquote pseudo Mega Ten. I can't even say like real Megaton because it kind of takes from Megaton, but pseudo Megaton, this is the first time we're seeing it in 3D, right? So obviously when you are in the front, obviously when you're in the front, you deal more damage. That means you take more damage. When you're in the rear, 
you deal less damage, but you take you take less damage. Uh, and of course, range would be beneficial to the rear. Any like mages or anything would be beneficial in the rear, and all your brawlers, aka your tanks and stuff, your your bruisers would be beneficial in the front. So yeah, this is the first time we're seeing this in 3D, and it kind of gives me hope um, for future Megaton to to kind of bring back the original three and three where it's like you have three in the front three in the back um obviously like with this it's only uh four characters so you know um i guess you can have everybody in the front or you know stagger it or whatnot um because of the box style you can only have three in the front three in the back but this one you know everybody can i guess you can't really have everyone in the back but you need someone in the front to kind of play tank so yeah, this one for for formation of vigor move a la Oh no, you can't have everyone. I, was, I didn't even read this one before I even said that. Moves all allies to the front row and increases their attack by two ranks for three turns. And hmm, I'm kind of curious about that. So another thing we're just learning. Um when uh, when you think when you think about like ranks in, in terms of like attack uh, agility, defense, um, mainly in the past, it, it, it it's differed, right? Because you have something like um, SMT5 where it's just only two, really two ranks, two, three ranks, I guess. Um, Strange Journey 4. You would go, place go up four ranks and that's it. And Usually in classic Megaton, it, it's been four ranks uh, that you could go up or down. And that's it. So it says increases, increases their attack by two ranks. So this is more of a, uh, like a formation mover and an attack buff. So it's interesting. With skills related to formation and support. The gunner who can shoot from a distance. The merchant who can use money related attacks. Debt collection. Ooh, it's a mag robbery skill too. Let's go. Ugh. Uh, uh SMT two has me like dreading mag, but I, I'm curious to see uh, like what uses uh mag will have. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious. And the faker with tricky moves. As the game progresses, players can gain. <gasps> Whoa, that's huge. <laughs> oh, wow, that is. As the masked dancer, whose skills and resistances can be. Like, as the game progresses, players gain three turn icons from the thinker. So that's huge that you can actually get your turn, your, your press turns back. That is huge. So yeah, we're, we're really getting some interesting, interesting uh, stuff from the archetypes. Players can unlock evolved archetypes such as the masked dancer, whose skills and resistances can be freely changed with equipment. The summoner, who is perceived as a highlight in job change. So summoner, like ba your basic, I don't know, summoner. <laughs> I want to say devil summoner, but like, again, it's more of like, you know, whatever you kill, you can, um, certain things you kill, you'll probably be able to summon. So I'm looking at berserker skill, right? Skills right now. Um, charge is basically a, um, an up in damage. It's just, it's either charge or con like charge is to a physical, what, Concentrate is to a ma magical. It just basically charges or increases the uh, damage of your next attack. Um, War cry. Ha, that's familiar. Um, War cry usually, if I'm not mistaken, war cry. Uh, damn it. Go back. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, war cry. Um, rem not removes defense, but. Um, yeah, I want to say Warcry does um, 
lower defense. Uh, da, 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 work cry. Yeah, decreases, no, oh, decreases attack, excuse me. Highlight in job change games with its power to summon monsters and the Berserker who has tremendous destructive power. There are so Berserker is probably, um, maybe AoE? Mostly AoE? Basic archetype lineages. And when the variations of each archetype are added up, so 14 basic archetypes starting out. In total, there are more than 40 archetypes available. Each archetype gains experience through battle and learns various skills. Bot, Blizz, Conde, and Magic Font. Next skill, Magic Circle. I'm curious how long the ranking process will be for each arch. Like, I know it's going to be different for each arch archetype, but um, what I'm what I'm guessing for the archetypes is that like it's forty plus. So let's let's say let's I'll I'll go with a number like 42, 43. Let's say you have forty two archetypes, and there's a do you have to get the final one? You have to have possess the other 42. It's kind of like, it's kind of like the uh, Magatama. It's going to probably be like the Magatama in uh, Nocturne where you have all the Magatama, but one um, to get Masakados, you had to get all the other Magatama and then go get Masakados. So it might be like that. We don't know. There's a wide variety of skills with different attributes and ranges. Hmm. Such as buffs, recovery, and passive skills to improve abilities. Mastering these skills allows players to gain an advantage in battle. I'm gonna go back to the skills, some of the skills. I wanna move I need to move my camera first. Uh give me a second. Because you can't see the skills. Um Various skills. Well, their shit is covering whatever it's saying. I want to say I want to say that's magic font. It's probably magic font. Um, hero passed in overall combat recovers MP each time an enemy is stunned or defeated. Nice. There's a wide variety of skills with different attributes and. No, that's not magic font. It was a different one. Um, barge, something. Um. Hero passive being hit by an enemy attack during overworld combat will not trigger battle uh, with enemy advantage. So that's warrior. They did say warrior um, does have an ability to uh, not engage in battle if they're hit. Ranges such as buffs, recovery, and passive skills to improve. And knight's passive, uh, hero passive, chance to reflect an enemy's attack in overworld combat. Chance. Just chance. Abilities. Mastering these skills allows players to gain an advantage. Strong enemies are stunned more easily in overworld combat. Hmm. Be nice. Advantage in battles. Further. Ah, go back. Go back. Recovers HP each time a support attack lands in overworld combat. That's, that's pretty nice. Uh, it gets light dodge, but uh, already resists light. And yeah, I didn't even look at the, the resistances and weaknesses. Uh, of course, weak to dark. Um... And week two, I, I like to call it smashing damage. So any, any kind of like unga bunga hit, it's not a slice, it's not pierce. Um, Furthermore, as archetypes evolve through growth, players can advance to higher tier archetypes. 
While the archetypes like the ones introduced earlier are unlocked as the base archetype of each lineage, progressing them through battle and strengthening bonds with supporters encountered on the journey is crucial. This system unlocks conditions for acquiring even more advanced archetypes, providing substantial depth and party development for players to enjoy and experience. For example, the Seeker, which first awakens for the protagonist, is a lineage in the Seeker category. And by deepening the bond with the supporter who controls this lineage, Go back. the bond with the supporter in the Seeker category, the Magic Seeker. Its attack, support, and healing abilities are strengthened and synthesis skills unlock affinities it can't normally learn. Hmm. By deepening the bond the with the supporter who controls this lineage, the character can evolve into the Magic Seeker, who wields powerful wind magic, as well as reinforcement support and passives, and then onto Soul Hacker. I still find it funny that somehow, some way, they find a they found a way to stick the words "soul hacker" in another mega in another pseudo Megaton game. Seeker's Gale deals heavy magic wind damage to all enemies. Recovers MP for each hit. Uh, one thing, one thing I was kind of concerned about because this is kind of a thing with you know dungeon traversal games. Um, is nor under normal like this is a Hashino game, so let's talk Hashino in Persona 3, 4, and 5. Whenever you go, whenever you first go into a dungeon, uh, you usually try to get everything. I say you usually, most veterans would usually try to get everything in one shot, right? You get in. Get the dun knock the dungeon out in one shot and then do the boss, right? But that really ate at your MP or whatever your your magic your magic was. MP SP whatever whatever it's called in each game. And so, what I'm hoping is that like I'm hoping that that kind of like I call it a pseudo punishment isn't there because you, I feel like you're punished for like, Hey, you, you, you decided to stick it out in, in this dungeon. Well, you got to use whatever you have for MP or SP or else you'll have to leave. Right. Because that was your other option was just straight up leaving. So I feel like some of these skills are kind of, you know, giving you a choice really. What's up, Sari? Um, I feel like some of these skills like allow you to, um, you know, hang on a little bit longer if if you want to just go it all out in one go. Um, which again, because there's time management here, we don't know how how affected we are by you know going in one day, coming out that eats up time, uh, and and whatnot. So yeah, it's. I'm kind of hoping that punish that kind of punishment isn't there in the game. And if it is like skills like this can counteract it. Who has powerful magic, such as additional MP recovery effects and penetration resistance. Yeah. It allows you to keep going. Who can shoot from a distance. And can evolve into. resistance the gunner who can shoot from a distance who has he gunner abilities who can shoot from a sleep shot only used from the back only usable from the back row uh deals weak physical pierce damage to one enemy may inflict sleep also has poison shot distance is a heroic figure in the ranged category and can evolve Myriad shots, myriad arrows, basically. Only usable from the back row. Deals weak physical pierce damage to all enemies. Wow. Basically, myriad arrows. Into Sniper, who is good at all target attacks. Has the exact same animation as myriad arrows, too. Now that I think about it. 
who can trigger and then on to Dragoon who can all right Dragoon wild salvo only usable from back row so this again it, it would be prudent to have your you know your range damage dealers in the back they're not going to be able to do anything else if you have them in the front uh, only usable from back row deals weak physical pierce damage to all enemies two to three times. And trigger attacks. Red feather only usable from back row deals medium magic fire damage and feather was electric. Blue feather is ice. It's with various magical attributes by deepening the bond with the supporter who controls this lineage. So basically magical magical um myriad arrows just with element on it each archetype variation is uniquely crafted with dedicated artwork and the appearance of each character changes based on the equipped archetype so i think you will enjoy the work and this is just basically your your weapon armor accessories and yeah very much this title was created with the cooperation of guest creators, including Koda Kazuma for the background concept art and Ikuto Yamashita for the gauntlet runner design. The archetype designs, boasting over 40 variations, are not only designed by Shigenori Soejima, who is in charge of character design for this title, but also by Yuji Himukai. So let's talk about that for a second. Um, because when, when you, when, the 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 number of architects came up right like because it's 40 plus right when you when you think about that number like it's not a persona megaton type of number because the, the number of um persona or demons um in, in a, a megaton game usually ranges around i want to say like 80 to 90 and maybe goes over 100 sometimes 40 that's that's a little bit of a lower number and and when you think about it like it, it it's it's kind of reminiscent of etrian odyssey because you know you have all these etrian odyssey jobs right and i've only played like a few etrian odyssey games but like the combination the the amount of combinations that you could do with uh etrian odyssey jobs is bonkers uh it's stupid sometimes and I felt, I felt like, honestly, I felt like Etrian Odyssey was the, was, was da more daunting than, than Megaton ever, because you have all these jobs and you want, it feels like sometimes you want to have ev like every job leveled because you never know what you might need, but you play with, you play with composition to see what's better. Is is a is a farmer? Do you really want a farmer? Sometimes you would want a farmer for dungeon dungeon traver, dungeon traversal. Excuse me, and and they're playing into that too. They're playing a little bit into uh, Etrian Odyssey, um, um, with the whole archetypes thing. Because uh, in a minute they're they're going to tell you how in how um, archetypes can affect your your traversal skills your your fast blade skills excuse me just telling lab to go ahead wanting to talk about monster hunter that's that's a whole nother thing oh my god the character designer for the etrian odyssey series who is likely familiar to atlas fans the Etrian Odyssey series is a dungeon crawling RPG. And that's, and that's another thing too, like Etrian Odyssey has the whole front back thing too. So that's so many parallels between this and Etrian Odyssey and I like it. Based on creating characters from a large number of jobs and organizing them into parties. And the fact that we have incorporated the ideas of the creator who has consistently been in charge of the design of the series is not only God, this looks so awesome. Oh my God. The 35th anniversary title of the Atlas brand. So please look forward to it as well. In the last live stream, 
We explained the archetype system that allows you to transform at any time during a battle and activate their skills after entering a turn-based battle with the squad button. Today I would like to introduce the archetype battle system in more detail. Against higher ranked foes, players can stun enemies with fast action before engaging in advantageous squad turn-based battles. However, if attacked by enemies first, the turn-based battle will begin with a disadvantage. Yeah. Players who prefer certainty in their attacks or struggle with action sequences should not try to take on the enemies through fast battle, but rather use the squad button to engage in turn-based combat. Depending on the situation... And I like that it gives you that option too, right? You know, some people might not be, you know, action... action-oriented, so they might just want to, you know... you know, just go in with group battle, and that's fine. So I like that they give you the option. I'm going to I'm going to try. I'm going to I'm going to try to do the whole DMC thing uh and then get it try to do that and get an advantage. But again, it depends on what you're going up against. Cuz uh, like from what we've seen, you you kind of have to dodge and whatnot, like especially with stuff that's oh, like way over your level, you kind of have to dodge and everything and you know attacks or struggle with it's not souls like but not try to take on the enemies through fast battle but rather use the squad button but to i, I kind of like combat what it's depending looking like. on the situation players are encouraged to adapt between high risk high reward combat and low risk low reward strategies the squad battle is a turn-based battle system adopted from shin megami tensei 3. in this system the number of actions per turn is determined by the number of party members and the number of actions increases if the enemy's weak points are exploited. So pre again, press turn. So strategize your next move wisely. Press turn, you can eliminate but you can get back turns apparently, which is something that hasn't been hasn't been done. Is unilaterally without giving them a turn. However, this system is a double-edged sword, since this also applies for the opponent. If enemy attacks exploit your party's weaknesses then your party's turn may not come for a while, leading to challenging battles. Metaphor is an evolution of our command battle system that has been cultivated over the years, and its innovative archetype system is unique to this title. I think we're in the clear. In command battles, players can change the party formation front and back, and each archetype has its optimal position of strength. And you should be able to do this in, I want to say you should be able to do this in battle too. Uh, because you're able to kind of like on the fly uh, in the past change who was in the front, who's in the back. For example, the mage can cast magic from the back row to compensate for its weak point, low defense, to some extent, maintaining its attack power. The knight can withhold its attacks and attract enemy attacks from the back row, and therefore. That's okay. From the back. Induce enemy attacks with minimal damage. Only a flesh wound. <laughs> the gunner who can use shooting is an archetype that specializes in long range attacks from the back row. The commander can change the formation of all members with its skills, allowing each player to freely create their own strategy. I shall fight as the noble I am. There is a special technique called synthesis that differs from normal skills. So when they were talking about synthesis, and I had a feeling synthesis would use more than, than one of your press turns, it, or, or depending, because, because they'll talk about it in a minute. Um, it's just, it, synthesis is just basically uh, what fusion attacks were in P2, where they, they combined, you know, to each two or more of your group uh, to do one Really, really powerful attack. Horse-drawn carriage deals heavy physical strike damage to one enemy. And so, yeah, it'll, it'll let you know how many um, press turns you're using with the attack. So, huh? No. I was wrong earlier. Because I was saying, like, they wouldn't do Mahama as a, as a synthesis. Mataru Kaja, which is a, which is your uh, AoE, um... I say AOE, which is a uh, all party attack buff is a synthesis. Wow. So normally that's just a normal spell. Mataru Kaja is just a normal spell. 
Here they make it a synthesis. Okay. All right. So my spells probably will more than likely are going to end up as synthesis. So Maraku Kaja will probably be a synthesis for the night or between the night and somebody else. We don't know. Synthesis, which means integration in psychological terms, is a system that allows archetypes to combine with other party members' archetypes. It can activate a special technique that is not available otherwise. To perform this skill, it consumes more than a normal action as it consumes an additional action from your ally's turn as well. This technique is more powerful for that reason. For example, while a mage and healer can only target a single enemy with their... Yep. Mahama synthesis. <laughs> yeah, they're putting the Ma skills behind synthesis. Attack. With the use of synthesis, the target can be changed to all enemies. The seeker's main attack is wind magic. But by using synthesis, the seeker can use attacks with attributes that are normally unavailable to it, such as light or strike. In addition, warriors are good at physical attacks. But if many of the same archetype are placed in a party, the attack can Hold on, go back. Physical attacks. But if many attributes that are normally unavailable to it, such as light or strike. In addition... Bamboo, bamboo splitter, excuse me. Deals heavy physical slash damage to one enemy, adds one turn icon on a killing blow. Hmm. So, basically, basically, that's a turn. You're just basically using a turn with that if you kill. Warriors are good at God, they're hitting it so quiet so quick excuse me warriors are deal severe slash damage to one enemy as a turn so yeah <laughs> so yeah basically you just get a turn back that's it are good at physical attacks All right, but if many of the same archetype are placed in a party the attack characteristics will naturally be skewed however the special synthesis attack that can be unleashed by three warriors can do a surprising amount of damage even in the early stages of the game. This system is an important element of the strategy, and if used properly, it can eliminate the enemies all at once. The activation conditions change depending on the combination of the party, so it is a fun element to try out different configurations and discover new synthesis combinations. Yeah, that's going to be pretty nutty. Uh, synthesis is going to be pretty nutty when... You think about like stacking all your all your buffs on it, so having a Tarukaja and then maybe a charge before doing a synthesis and then unleashing holy hell. Like that's that's gonna be pretty nutty. Moreover, the development team has worked. So this is where your mag is going. Your mag is your mag is going towards towards um let me let me go back and see. The development team has worked hard to ensure that the diverse range of archetypes remains engaging even in the later stages, allowing players to enjoy different compositions. We aimed for a balance to avoid a situation where players' party compositions become similar. So as the game I'm guessing your mag is going into stats. The development team has worked. 750 mag is required to channel the knight for the first time. Oh, no, no, no. That's not stats. It's just to awaken. To awaken the actual archetype. So once you have access to it, I think you have to awaken it. So Mag's gonna be huge. Worked hard. Oh, better take a merchant. The diverse <laughs> range of archetypes. Better take a merchant. Still a lot of magic. Stages, allowing players to enjoy different compositions. We aimed for a balance to avoid a situation where players' party compositions become similar as the game progresses, or where only certain archetypes are used. When players change from one archetype. Oh. 
balance to avoid a situation where players' party compositions become similar as the game progresses. So you can pay to have skills inheritable. Or where only certain archetypes are used. When players change from one archetype to another, they can inherit the skills they have already mastered to the new archetype. Huh. So you can make something completely broken or something to, to cover weaknesses. Huh. Neat. Have a few skills. The command battle system not only includes action count strategies, but also formation tactics, special moves called synthesis, and a skill inheritance system, providing numerous ways to creatively configure archetype strategies in the party. While the party consists of four members initially, it can expand to seven as the story progresses. All members can equip any of the 40 plus archetypes, so we hope players enjoy developing their unique strategies. Now that we have explained how to use archetypes, so yeah, here they battles, just go into. Let's discuss how archetypes abilities come into play in other ways. Yeah, how archetype abilities um, are used on on the field. So we want you With to try out action. not only the command battles, but also the strategic action. In the case of the warrior's great sword, its large swing delivers powerful blows, and while swinging it. The user is not susceptible to preemptive strikes. So that's like more of enemies. a tanky kind of overall action. In the case action. of the mage's staff, the attack range extends not only forward but also around the user. Mage good for clears, good for clearing a room. By multiple enemies, it can wipe out many monsters when outnumbered and outclassed. Additionally, there are archetypes that can use ranged weapons. The faker can throw knives, and the gunner uses a crossbow, allowing attacks from a safe distance. Enemies roaming the field also have various characteristics and weaknesses. For instance, you might use a gunner with long distance attack range to take down flying foes. However, if you choose the protagonist's archetype focusing mainly on fast action, he will fight with that archetype when you enter a squad battle. You cannot swap archetypes in a squad battle, so it's important to plan ahead of time. We hope that everyone will enjoy the fast and squad combat. So be mindful what you're using. Let me also talk about. Now, this about is one thing I was really going to be concerned about. There are various enemies in the dungeon. And here we have a dungeon with a a clock. So there's a time-based dungeon. Many familiar creatures from fantasy worlds are recreated in a modern design. Some enemies that ambush you, some that hide underground, and some that appear in a group. There are no dungeons that require a specific type of archetype party, so please enjoy trying out various party strategies of your choice. Oh, that's kind of like Souls bullshit. He just was out in the corner just chilling, and you just came up, and he got the ambush. Yeah, they, they're, they're taking some stoles a little bit. Nice. I appreciate it. Although, there are tough enemies and bosses that force you into battles. When this happens, the type of party... But I was, want, uh, what I was wanting to say about dungeons in general, like, it looks like they're putting... They're putting a lot more thought into dungeons. Um, where, uh, as, you know, in recent personas, they've just been more... Uh, kind of like a cinematic staple and, and not, I mean, Persona 5's dungeons were, were kind of like cinematic and really, you know, kind of like one way, I guess. It, it was really linear, really cinematic, but really linear. Um, and it looks like they're putting more thought into, you know, what a dungeon is. Uh, no dungeons that require a specific See, type of seeing earlier, party. right, right here so in this time dungeon. Fantasy uh, worlds are recreated in a modern design. You're getting affected by some something, that by the mud or whatever that some is. Some that hide underground, and some that appear in a group. There are no dungeons that require a specific type of archetype party, so please enjoy trying out various party strategies of your choice. 
Although, there are tough enemies and bosses that force you into battles. When this happens, the type of party you bring will affect the battle. Draw steel. We are spotted. Monsters called humans are especially tricky to face, so beware. We think you will enjoy planning strategies for the battles ahead. Moreover, the degree of freedom in party formation and the fact that the difficulty level varies depending on which quest you conquer first can affect the perceived difficulty of battles, and a slight error in judgment can be fatal in this battle. The difficulty of the game can be changed at any time, and by using the retry feature, you'll be able to return yeah, you to can the just top of the battle, start the battle from the top. The challenge again with any other time. strategies you might have thought of. So please rest assured that this game is made in a way that ensures all players can confidently take on the challenges. Additionally, a network feature allows players Really interesting quality of life network feature that allows you to see like, hey, what your friends are doing. And it even tells you what difficulty they're playing on. Like, it's seen easy, normal, normal, normal. This one's already reached level 99 on, on everything. They have 20, rank 20 everything, you know. I thought this was really, really uh, unique. This is something we really haven't seen. I mean, in past network features, it tells you, like, what they did for the day and whatnot, but not what party they cleared a certain quest or certain boss with, so. Eh. I'm kind of indifferent on it. I, I think I think it's kind of cool, but I'm kind of indifferent on it. You know, not everything will work for everyone. Everything, everyone thinks differently, so. It could be to your advantage. It could be a complete shit. And you're like, why the hell? Did, how the hell did they clear with this? You know. Here's to view the party compositions used by other players who've cleared the same dungeon. Available to view at any time. With the press of a button, you can instantly switch to those compositions, making it easier to adapt and strategize. I'm sure there are players who remember playing classic job change games based on the recommended information of specific party setups for certain dungeons. Yeah, back in the day we did, yeah. This network feature is like a modern version of that kind of playstyle. Above all, we wanted players to be able to see firsthand how other players are progressing in the dungeon they are currently conquering, using their own party composition and ingenuity, even though it is a loosely connected aspect. Well done. So yeah, that was basically it. So, what did you think? They just went into really good detail about the uh, the archetypes and whatnot. They further described the the bonuses. Who pre-order will receive pre-order bonuses, including the archetype EXP chest set and an adventurer's journey pack. Both in-game item sets are useful for battles. Stale black breads. Deals 300 almighty damage to one enemy. Huh. 3,000 reeve in game currency. Five expensive medicines. So here, fruits and incenses are, are going to be a big thing in, in game. Not really big, it's just something to be on the lookout for. To kind of help if you are really about that life and want to get every um, archetype 220, then yeah. And party development. And then, of course, the collector's journey. edition, which, again, I, I've heard uh, just a little while ago that some are still available uh, in the US and in Canada. So get them if you are really thinking about it. I've already pre ordered mine. I will be away from home when it gets here, but yeah, some really good stuff in, in this collector's edition uh, and the packaging looks really, really nice. So yeah, that was basically it for this, uh, this showcase. There will be another showcase, uh, in the near future. They did say before release. So 
in that one, they're they're going to be talking about more of the world, the history, the characters, the the lore. Even though, even though Japan had already done that with like a with the panel of uh, voice actors. So if you didn't see that one, that one actually is on um, Atlas Japan's uh, YouTube. So you might want to go back and check that one. But this one will be in English. So there you go. Um, but what do you think? Uh, again, for YouTube, pretty much leave a, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think, or if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I'm going to continue to cover this until release. I mean, I'll, I'll be streaming it, um, on release. So there's that. Of course, SMP5 coming really soon as like next week is SMP5. So SMP5 Vengeance. So, uh, there's that. Of course, Dawn Trail things like that. Like this is going to be a busy month for me and in, in the years it's going to be busy, but yeah, leave as always, leave your comments down below, leave a like, help grow the channel and I will see you in the next video.